Sorry if my face looks kind of beat up this week. Um, college is starting to get to me. And just to start, thank you so much to everybody who's been subscribing and leaving super nice comments. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm almost to 100 subscribers, which is amazing to me. I know you're probably thinking that's not a big deal. There's some YouTubers, they get like 50,000 subscribers in a day and they don't make a big deal about it. But to me, it really means a lot and I really appreciate everyone who's subscribing and leaving cool comments to me and asking questions and all this stuff. It's, it's, it's really making me want to continue doing this and I really appreciate it. So if you bought an iPhone 7 Plus recently, you're probably really interested in the portrait mode that's supposed to be releasing later on this year. And if you want to try it out right now, you can go ahead and download the beta of the update. It's supposed to give you the portrait mode. It's a beta version of the software, so it's not final, it's not gonna be perfect. And the beta version is what I'm gonna be testing in this video today. And before I switch over to my computer to show you guys the images and show you guys how it worked in different lighting situations, I just wanna give you some background information on how cameras work and how crop sensors work. So unless you're using a 35 millimeter full frame camera, everything else is gonna be a crop factor. And that just means it's gonna to have to be multiplied by a certain number to get back to that 35 millimeter full camera size. So unless you're using a full frame 35 millimeter camera, everything else has to have a crop factor applied to it. And full frame cameras are Canon's 5D series, Sony's A7 series, things like that. Those are full frame cameras. The sensor size is 35 millimeters. I myself have a Sony A6300. That is a APS-C size sensor. So that means it has to be multiplied by 1.5 to get it back to be a full frame 35 millimeter equivalent. And the smaller the sensor size goes, the more you have to multiply to get it back to that 35 millimeter equivalent. So if you had a micro four thirds camera, that's two times crop factor to multiply the focal length and the aperture to get back to 35 millimeter full frame. So I'm using a 16 to 70 F4 zoom lens on my APS-C size camera. So that means I have to multiply both the 16 to 70 and the full F4 by 1.5. So that'd give me roughly a 24 to 105 f6 lens. And if I'm losing you here, just know that all cameras that aren't full frame cameras have to be crop factors because all cameras are essentially just trying to mimic what a full frame camera would get. And that is why all cameras that aren't full frame need to have a crop factor applied to their focal length and their aperture because all cameras are measured in equivalence to a 35 millimeter full frame lens. So let's say I was gonna take a picture at 16 millimeters with my APS-C camera. The smaller sensor size in a way magnifies the 16 millimeters and actually makes it 24 millimeters because it's magnifying it by 2.5 and the aperture is being reduced by 1.5. So my F4 lens is actually being reduced by 1.5 times to give me an F6. And if you don't know what aperture is, aperture is measured in f-stops and that just tells you basically how much light is allowed through the lens. And more light means better image quality, means less noise, so you know, there's that. And now you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with the iPhone at all? Well, Apple has claimed to put a 28 millimeter f1.8 lens and a 56 millimeter f2.8 lens in this tiny little cell phone. And in reality, what they're actually doing is applying the crop factor to the focal length, but not applying the crop factor to the aperture, the f-stop, the f1.8 and the f2.8. So essentially, they're just lying to everybody. It's not a 56 millimeter f2.8 lens and it's not a 28 millimeter f1.8 lens. If we apply the appropriate crop factors to each lens, the 28 millimeter has about a 7.2 times crop factor lens and then the 56 millimeter has about a 8.6 crop factor lens, I think. So if we do the basic math, we can see that we're actually getting a 56 millimeter f24 about lens and a 28 millimeter f13 approximately lens both of which are absolutely terrible for low light and that's why you get really grainy images whenever you're indoors and you don't have the best lighting setup but to be fair apple is not the only manufacturer that does this basically every manufacturer that produces cameras lies about the aperture basically they tell you what the 35 millimeter equivalent would be for the focal length but they never tell you what the 35 millimeter equivalent would be for the aperture which is the f-stop but anyway, now I'm gonna switch over to my computer so we can go through the images together and you can get a full rundown of how it works and how it functions. Okay, this is the first image I took. And as you can see, we are in the shade. There is sunlight outside, as you can see from the background, but we are in the shade. We're not getting directly hit by it. And the effect worked almost flawlessly. And I say almost because as you can see up here, let me zoom in there. What is that? This is a one leg of her glasses and a partial section of it is getting cut off and turned into blur. And you're probably gonna see a lot of little artifacts like that throughout all these images. They're not major, they're not like image breaking, but they are there and you are probably gonna notice them. And of course my computer decides to ramp up its fans as soon as I start recording, so we're gonna have to deal with that for now. 
Um, but for the most part, this is a very beautiful image. But if you do zoom in here, you can see that it is very soft. I mean, it's an iPhone. We can't expect amazing quality from it. But if you're just posting this to social media, this is going to work fine. And no one's going to probably notice the artifact or the softness. Next up, I just kind of took this while well, I wasn't paying attention, as you can see from his expression. <laughs> Um, but again, we are not getting directly hit by sunlight. There is light outside of us um, and the effect still works pretty fine. It works very well actually. Um, in this one, we're not getting any weird artifacts. Actually, maybe down here a bit, you can see the edge isn't smooth. I mean, his face doesn't have these weird jagged edges all over it. Um, so there is that. But again, these are very minor things. They will probably be worked out in the final release. Now here we're being directly hit by the sun and as you can see it works amazing. It's beautiful. Actually I think this is probably better result than my first two images I showed you. But again if we zoom in here as you can see there are jagged bits to the edge. It isn't perfect. It is still a beta version after all. Um, and probably even in the final release we're probably going to still see that because this is artificial, it's kind of just painting it around you and guessing where you are. So it's something we have to deal with. But as you can see here, much sharper than the other images. Not perfect still, not DSLR quality at all. So if you think you're going to get DSLR quality from a cell phone, I'm sorry. We're not there yet. Hopefully one day. I would also enjoy that because I hate carrying around a giant camera. So this image doesn't actually have the blurred effect applied to it. It lets you save the blurred version and the non-blurred version. So it's just to show you guys what it would look like without the blur. And with the sun not being there, not being present, there's still light outside, but it was getting cloudy as it was about to rain. And the blurred effect really just helps make kind of boring images just much, much more interesting. As you can see, she stands out way more. It's way more intriguing. I also wanted to test how the blurred effect would work through a full body shot. Um, again, this is the non-blurred version just to show you guys what the image looked like before. It works decently. Um, there are some some parts of it that are kind of weird, as you can see. It's kind of like she has an aura around her of non-blurredness. <laughs> and then, if you zoom in here, you can see right here this very distinct line of where it started to apply the blur because it thought this small bit of water was still a part of her. Again, down here too, and then this kind of entire section here. Um, same as on the other side again this, there's a kind of a stroke around her of just non-blurredness um, then it fixes itself up here a little bit again not the sharpest image lots of noise the sun wasn't out so in this image we're underneath the canopy there is no sun out at all it started to rain as you can see from the water droplets on the umbrella um, this is without blurred again and then if we apply the blur boom and actually, I was very impressed with how it worked here because as you can see, she's perfectly still in focus. And then as soon as it hits the shoulder, it starts to blur off and then this entire part of the umbrella is gone. Like it's all blurred out. And you still have some of the blood over here in focus. And then again, you see it right here. As soon as it hits that metal part, it starts to blur out. Off the shoulders, blurs out. Very impressive for this situation. I think I was going to be able to recognize her through the umbrella because they're all very stacked on top of each other, very close to each other, so I didn't think it would be able to find the focus and then blur out if we didn't know. And then here is just the blurred version, as you can see again with the umbrella. She is being hit by some light, but there's no sun, it's just reflected off the water and the clouds. Um, but yeah, nice beautiful blur effect over here, very nice. Again, as you can see here, bumpy edges, kind of weird, but there's that. But you can also use this depth of field effect on things that aren't human as this, all right? This is the normal version without the depth of field. And then this is the depth of field version. It actually worked very, very well. Um, no problem at all. As you can see, it's not, it's not detecting a face. It's not doing any of that. It's just seeing what's forward and what's back. And it's blurring very nicely. You got these water droplets in focus up here. And then it starts to blur out over here. Shoes, just seeing what could do again with things that aren't people. As you can see, perfectly, this one's perfectly in focus, and then as soon as it passes that, all blurred. Other foot, very blurred. Hit by direct sunlight. It kind of messed up here, as you can see. It's kind of weird what it's doing here. Looks like this part is blurred out, and then the upper portion of her shoulder is still in focus. I don't know what happened there, it's very strange. Um, but again, throughout here, nicely done. 
still some bumpiness to the edges. And then the glasses as well, as you can see here, and there's an artifact here, it blurred out this portion of her glasses and this portion of her glasses. So again, not perfect, but again, if you're gonna post this on social media, you're not gonna really be able to tell. It's gonna reduce the size of the image anyway. Okay, here we're in the mall now. This is Hot Topic. This is the darkest store I could think of in a mall. <laughs> um, and this is the effect without well, this is without the depth of field effects. It's extremely blurry because it's an F24 lens. Again, it's not amazing. It's not made for low light. And then here, depth of field effects. It actually worked very well. It's supposed to have a lot of light. It tells you through the through the settings that it needs light to work. Oops, sorry about that. As soon as you try to take an image, it will tell you it needs more light or you need to be further away from the subject before it can actually work. It didn't tell me any of those in this image, even though it definitely needed more light because it was supposed to not work here. But it still worked, still blurred. Uh, not really a nice image, extremely grainy, but it works. The depth of field effect didn't work too well here. I think I was a bit too far away from her or at the angle I was at, I don't know. Yeah, it's not blurred as nicely. It's not like a clear start and end point. And then you can see another artifact up here. I don't know what happened here. Um, but it's a very strange artifact that we're seeing. Again, another test without any people in it. Well, except this woman over here. <laughs> kind of creepy. I'll say a picture if she was unnoticed. Whatever. Um, but without the blurred effect and then with the blurred effect, if things like this, I think it's going to work amazingly well. Especially because you aren't going to notice any like bumpy edges because there aren't any people. There aren't any really smooth edges at all. Um, so yeah, just amazing shot here and here are a few more this effect actually works much much better the closer you are to your subject as you see it works very nicely beautiful image everything is completely blurred out still a bit bumpy edge still kind of a outline here but very very good actually very usable here's another weird artifact it cut off a bit of her hair for some reason but besides that, not too bad. These are really the optimal settings for this effect. Even though she's not being directly hit with the sun in her face, she still gets the sunlight on her back. It's a nice glowing effect there. Beautiful blur, nicely done. And then more of a medium distance, beautifully blurred. Everything's nice, but it's not as blurred. It doesn't seem as shallow a depth of field as when you're very, very close to them, which is just the case with any lens, really. You're gonna get a better shallow depth of field the closer you get. So as you can see, the portrait mode on the iPhone 7 Plus actually works extremely well. It's like very, very good, like amazingly good. Like I can't even get those kind of results on my actual camera. So it's kind of upsetting, but whatever. And hopefully by the time the official update releases, those artifacts that I was seeing in some of my images won't exist anymore or they'll be so minute that you won't really be able to notice them. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. I really appreciate it. I'm almost to 100, I'm so close. I'm really happy that you guys actually been enjoying my videos, been commenting and been subscribing to me. That means a lot to me. It means that I'm doing something right. So thank you so much, it means the world to me. I really appreciate it. And if you're into photography or anything like that, feel free to follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'll put my name somewhere around here. It's just my same YouTube name. But I promise the photos on my Instagram are gonna be way better than the example photos I showed you today. <laughs> but as always, stay sexy, and I'll see you sometime.